Rogers in San Antonio. Hey, Roger, how are you? Hello, Dave. Thanks for taking my call, and how are you all? Better than we deserve, sir. What's up? Well, let me give you a quick rundown, and then my question is uh, about my wife and I both being 75 and wanting to protect uh, our assets. Uh, the quick rundown is uh, we have zero debt on anything. Way to go. Uh, retirement in- Thank you. Retirement income is around 98500 uh, which is net. And um, let's see, we have 93000 invested in five stock funds uh, through two investment companies. Uh, we have over 370000 in uh, CDs, bonds, and fixed annuities. Uh, net worth is about $1.4 million. Risk outlook, uh, and that's the reason I'm calling, uh, we spend less than we make. Uh, we're very, if not ultra-conservative. And we want to protect what we have. No high risk, no high yield type of thing. What, what's right the, now what's the other to, million in? Uh, two houses and land. Okay. Okay. So you you're, and, you're, you're worry about risk, um, yeah. but you've still managed to put together a million four in net worth. Way to go. So what's your question? Well, thank you. Uh, well, we're, we've got uh, this money that's uh, 98, uh, no correction, 93,000 in um, investments and then over, like I said, 370 in CD bonds and fixed annuities. But CDs are now insultingly flat. And so we're trying to say, well, what do we do with CDs that are coming out of maturity now? I've got one, for example, for 122,000 that's out just as a couple days ago. Mm -hmm. And um, so we're wondering what would be the best thing, uh, given our very, very conservative risk level, uh, go to what? Would I-bonds be one thing, for example? No. I mean, you can do whatever you want to do, but here's the thing. You're taking two kinds of risk. If you don't outpace inflation and taxes, you're losing purchasing power. So that's one kind of risk. And you've been accepting that kind of risk for quite a while with these stupid butt CDs and these underperforming bonds you're talking about. I'll tell you what, hang on. We'll talk about this a little bit when we come back from the We're talking with Roger in San Antonio. Roger, 75 years old, million four net worth, got $93,000 in mutual funds, a $98,000 income, $370,000 in underperforming CDs and bonds and so forth, wanting to know what he can put it into with virtually no risk because he hates risk. Is that a fair summary of what you told me so far? Yes, sir. That was right right on. Okay, thanks. So what I was saying going into the break is there's two kinds of risk. One is the risk of losing the money, which is the risk you're worried about. Putting it in something and it goes down in value or worse than that, it completely evaporates to nothing. And that's the great fear of someone who is risk averse. I'm risk averse like you are. Okay, But sometimes in an effort to avoid that kind of risk, we embrace fully another kind of risk that we didn't even realize was there because the average inflation rate for the past 72 years has been 3.2 years, 3, 3.2% according to the consumer price index. In the last year or so, it's been of course a whole lot more than that. We've got crazy inflation with all kinds of weird crap going on with whatever the economics mess is that we have right now. And, and so it's even worse, but let's just use 3%, you know, 3.2 or 4%, 4.2 right in there. Somewhere in there is about every year we see a, gentle increase in prices over the years. You're old enough like I am to have seen that. So if you don't make that plus the taxes on the investment, you're not even breaking even. And so you need to make about 6% on your money or you're losing purchasing power. You're losing money every year. And so if you're not running fast enough away from that kind of risk, but not so fast that you run over the cliff, on the other kind of risk, you'll get tackled from behind. And that's what you've been experiencing. This 370,000, I'll give you an example of that, how, how, how poignant this is. Can you imagine what four million or what $400,000 would be worth um, 15, 16 years later if you left it in a coffee can? Well, I can tell you, it would be 1.6 million is what it should have been in a decent, something making 10%. That's what it would have come out. And if you left it in a coffee can, you know what it's got? It's 400000 So you lost $1.2 million in potential growth during that 16 years by burying it in a coffee can. A CD is not much better. Yeah, that's true. So that that's what I look at. Now, having said all that, I'm not a gambler. I don't like losing money. I work too hard for it. 
So I'm not playing yes, any fad true. stuff. I'm not done. I'm just looking for tried and true stuff. And so, and I'm thinking about what my timeline horizon is. And, and you know, okay, so if if I'm going to leave the money alone a year, what's safe? If I'm going to leave it alone three years, what's safe? If I'm going to leave it alone ten years, what's safe? And here's the interesting thing. If you look at just, for instance, a, a simple uh, index fund, an S&P 500 fund, if you leave it alone five years, the number of times you actually would have lost money is less than 3% of the time. And the average annual rate of return would be north of 10%. Average. That's a 10-year horizon. That'd make you 85. But here's the thing. You're likely not going to touch this money. It's likely you're investing it for your kids. Yes, sir. That's true. So and you, grandsons. Yeah, so you have a 10-year horizon or a five-year horizon you, you know you don't have a short-term need for this 370,000 so that's why at 61 as a risk-averse person I'm very comfortable when I have a long-term time horizon investing in something like some conservative very easygoing boring mutual funds and all the get-rich-quick guys make fun of me, but then you're just a boomer, Ramsey. You don't understand. You're an antique dinosaur. You don't, understand like how this, you don't understand how all these get-rich-quick things work. Yeah, I do. I've lost my butt in them. I know exactly how they work. And so I don't do them anymore. I don't like risk. So anyway, that's my pitch. So you're saying, hey, you can move this 370000 over to some conservative mutual funds, and the chances of you losing money over a five-year time horizon, very slim statistically historically and it's less depressing literally than putting it in the cds or the bonds so that's the move where's this income coming from roger the, the ninety-eight thousand. uh ninety-eight thousand is um my civil service retirement uh, air force reserve retirement and a little bit of social security cool so you're not touching any of these funds anyways you're going to be able to live off of that for the rest of your life what's the what's the guarantee on all of that income it'll obviously be, all that'll be there yeah there's not no that's going away thank you for your service yeah by the way yeah thank so, you so here's another thing that helps me with risk and i'm not again it's not a gamble and i'm not i'm not putting the money up there but here if let's just say that uh you picked the worst mutual fund in the history of man and you lost all the money and you're not even going to put it in one fund so this is not possible okay let me tell you how many growth stock mutual funds have gone completely broke to zero. None. Ever. Okay? Because all those right. companies that they own would have all had to have been worth zero. So you would have had to make like Home Depot, McDonald's, Coca-Cola, Hewlett Packard, IBM, and Apple all worth zero is the only way your mutual fund is going to be worth zero because all those stocks are in your mutual fund. Okay? So, but let's right. just pretend you lost the whole thing because because I'm stupid and I don't know what I'm doing and I told you about something bad, okay? So if you lost the whole thing, you've got a million-dollar net worth with $100,000 of your income. You're okay. You, can, you can't emotionally stomach the risk, but you can mathematically stomach the risk. Follow me? Yes, sir. Conceptually, I, I, I'm not depending on that money. Uh, exactly. Not actually, actually not, not depending on that money uh, for anything. And so it's really going to go to the daughter and grandson exactly. who are doing very well. Exactly. So what you've got to do is you need to – What? Uh, let me tell you this. Okay, so when I buy real estate, um, I buy in my town where I grew up, and I know what that neighborhood is. You know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. And so I can remember, because I'm old, I can remember when that house sold for – a fourth or a third or a tenth of what it's selling now when I drive down the road. I mean, I sold the house for $42,000 when I was 18. I'm 61. That house is 242000 or, or 342000 now. I know that, right? So I can look at the history. It's just in my, it's imprinted in my brain because I've driven past it. So I'm looking at the historical data on that street. I've watched that neighborhood go up or come down, deteriorate or clean up or regentrify or whatever's happening. I'm watching the historical data on the neighborhood. And because it's in a, in quotes, air quotes, good, neighborhood and it's got a historical 25 40 50 year track record of going up in value I don't think I worry about my real estate so right. here, in my point being if you're gonna do what I'm suggesting take your time and really understand with your smart investor pro or with your investment advisor uh, the history if you really look at the history and say how many times on this mutual fund in the past 30 years, would I have lost money? You know, if you looked at, 
uh, Investment Company of America, ICA, one of the biggest funds ever, or Fidelity Magellan, one of the biggest funds ever. If you just, I'm, I'm not recommending either one of those, but they're old funds and they're huge. If you go back and look and say, okay, over 40 years or 50 years, under what scenarios would I actually have less money than when I started? You're going to get really comfortable with that level of risk once you see the historical data, like driving down that street in the neighborhood. Yeah. You'll sleep better at night, Roger. Do the math.